What time is it? It's science time. Science, science time. Let's all stop and just unwind. One, two, three, four, here we go. Learn so much, your brain explodes. Lessons so cool, so fresh. Beat so big, you'll lose your breath. Burning facts are real cool stuff. Scream for more, can't get enough. It's, it's science time. It's fun, you best believe. Explore and learn new things. Come and join me, please. I'm Mr. C, and this super smart group is my science crew. Lila is our notebook navigator. Alfred is our experiment expert, Riley is our dynamite demonstrator, and London is our research wrangler. Working with my team is the best and makes learning so much fun. Actually, you should join us. We're learning about thermal energy. What time is it? It's science time. Welcome back to another episode of DIY Science Time. I'm Mr. C and I'm so glad that you're here to be part of our crew today. We're talking about thermal energy, things like conduction, convection, and radiation. Most importantly, we're gonna start right now because I have an ice cube that I'm gonna grab with my hand. Ice cubes are 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, and they're super cold. I'm gonna hold it in my hand really tightly because what's happening right now is we have heat energy from my body being absorbed into the ice cube. It's causing the ice cube to go from a solid to a liquid and it's melting all over the table. But here's the thing, in just a moment, I'm gonna put the ice back into the container and we're gonna turn on a thermal camera so you can see what the ice cube is doing to my hands. Are we ready? I've got this hand over here that I haven't done anything with and this one here that has the ice cubes in it. Drop this out. And now look at my hands. My right hand is so cold from holding that ice. And you can see on the thermal camera that it's actually a much darker color. It's dark blue. And that's an indicator that it has a much lower temperature. That's what we're doing today. We're talking ice. We're talking heat. And we're gonna have fun because we're gonna build a thermometer and maybe even make some ice cream. So, Alfred, what materials do we need today? Things are heating up with our activities today. You're going to need the following materials to get started an empty water bottle, a clear straw, modeling or crafting clay, red food coloring, and most importantly, your science notebook. A science notebook is a tool that every scientist should have, and it gives us a place to record all of our learning. Taking good notes and being organized allows us to be better scientists. A science notebook allows us to go back and review all the data and information we've gathered during our experiments. Plus, it allows us to share results with other scientists who might be interested in learning more about what we've discovered. Whenever you see the notebook pop up on the screen, like this, it's a reminder that this is a good place for us to jot down new information. You can see I've already added a title and a list of materials for today's activity. Our crew is still going to have lots of information to collect and organize as we go through the experiment, so keep your notebook handy. Most importantly, the more you use the science notebook, the better you'll get at taking notes and recording data. If you don't have a science notebook yet, Download a copy of Mr. C's science notebook from the website. It'll be snuggle time after the show, I promise. How good do you think you are at being a thermometer? Do you think you can measure the temperature of an object? Have some fun with me here. What I want you to do is the table you're sitting at. I want you to put your hands on the table. How does it feel? Does it feel cool? Does it feel warm? Describe it to yourself. My table feels kind of cool. Now I want you to find another object, like a metal pan or a chair leg that might be metal. Grab something metal. How does that feel? Is it cool? Is it warm? Is it colder than the table? Describe that to someone in the room with you. How does that feel? We got a styrofoam ball here. All right. It's weird. It feels different. I've got this. Oh, my little. My little snuggly bear. Okay, that feels, definitely feels different. I've got this metal pan. Oh, that feels cooler. We've got a little C, one of our science crew members. She definitely feels not as cold as the metal pan. 
So can you describe those things? How would you describe them? Some of them felt cooler and some of them felt warmer. But what if I told you that everything in your room is approximately the same temperature? That's right, they're at equilibrium. My house is set at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that everything in this room is approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I have the styrofoam ball. I actually have a thermometer in the back of it. It is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I have this pan right here and I have a digital thermometer here so that I can test it. 70.6 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I have this wooden spoon, 70.4 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got this metal spoon, ooh, it feels cool, but let's see what temperature it is. 70.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we have the stuffed animal. 71 degrees Fahrenheit. They're all about the same temperature. But why did some of the objects feel colder to the touch than others? Well, it comes down to this idea that some objects are better conductors of heat energy. Metals typically are good conductors of heat energy. So when you touch metal, it absorbs the heat energy from your hand faster than things like wood, because those are better insulators. <laughs> <laughs> Music to my ears. So if you want to be better at taking temperature, you don't want to use your hands, you need a thermometer. A thermometer is a tool that scientists use to measure the heat energy of an object. The thermometer has indicating fluid inside of it which expands as it gains heat energy and contracts as it loses heat energy. If you place a thermometer into a warm cup of water, the liquid expands and rises. This is because of thermal expansion. The markings on the thermometer allow us to accurately determine the temperature of an object. Just like this thermometer, the water inside of our container is going to expand and rise and fall. As it heats up, it expands. As it cools, it contracts. The inside of this thermometer is going to be the same thing. This little piece of glass is filled with this fluid. As it gains heat energy, it rises up into the thermometer and reads at a higher temperature. When we put it into something like ice, it's gonna drop in temperature because the liquid inside contracts. So let's get to building. First thing, you're gonna take your bottle, take off the cap, and we're gonna poke a hole into the top of the container. Now this is a soft cap, and I'm gonna take, after I do that little push hole, I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna put it through really nicely. And I'm gonna test to see if my straw fits in there. Not yet, so I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. There we go. And hopefully it's a pretty snug fit, and it is. That's perfect. We're gonna also seal this up here with some clay or modeling clay here in just a moment. But before we do that, we're gonna add some water to our container. Oops, pouring all over the place. I'm gonna go up just about to three quarters, maybe a little higher. And I'm gonna add a little bit of red food coloring to my container so that I can see the liquid moving up and down in my straw. All right, it's starting to look like a thermometer. Now what we do is we take our straw and our cap and we screw it on. Whoa, <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> all right, so here's the thing. When you push this down, you don't wanna push it all the way down where it touches the bottom of the container. You wanna have a little bit of a gap. And I'm gonna bring mine up just ever so slightly so that we can see the liquid in there. All right, so now we have to seal this. Oh, we're gonna need I had to blow off the liquid because I'm afraid that the wetness won't allow my clay to seal that hole. We'll see what happens. All right, we're gonna put that on there really snug. A little wet there. That'll be okay, I hope. 
So now we need to get our liquid into the straw. And the way you do this is by carefully just giving a little puff of air into the straw. And what that's going to do is this. Oh, it's in there, but it's actually, oh, you can't see it. Can you see that it came up? So the liquid is in there, but it's stopping underneath the bottle cap. It's actually perfect because we're gonna put this into some warm water now to see if it actually expands and rises. All right, I'm excited. And I have another one over here. Let me show you what I did to this one really quick. So I used the clay on this one and I think it's gonna work fine, but here I used some hot glue to seal this. And that way I know there's no air that's able to escape. So this is an alternative that you can do as well. All right, it's time to test. Let's get some warm water and some cold water to see if our thermometer actually reads temperature. Yeah, here we go. First, we're gonna pour in some water into our cold ice to let that ice bath get started. And then we're going to take some of this hot water, pour it into this container. And I'm going to slide it over here so it's out of the way. And now what we do is we take our thermometer, put it into the warm bath. Come on. Hmm. I can't tell if it's actually going up because it started in the middle. Oh, there it is. It's working. <laughs> Look at it go. Oh, wow. It's gaining all that heat energy from the surrounding water. As it heats up, it expands. And as it expands, it rises through our tube. So now we can actually see that liquid rising. It's just like a regular thermometer. Oh, that is so awesome. It worked flawlessly. All right, so now we can see it's actually pretty high. I'm gonna bring it over here into the ice bath to see if it behaves any differently. So now, here we go. I gotta be careful because when I squeeze the bottle, oops, oh, I squeezed the bottle. I think I made some of the water come up. Oh, we've got some surface tension going on up there. Oh, I think I messed it up when I squeezed the bottle. I knocked off that bubble up top. It actually might take a little bit longer also for that liquid to cool and then contract. There it goes. Oh, that is awesome. So our thermometer is actually working. Ooh. So we can actually see that it dropped. I'm gonna put this one in over here really quickly also, see if it will expand. So this one over here is starting to drop, well, continuing to drop, and this one over here is going to start to expand. The reason is, is the warm water on the inside of this container is losing its heat energy to the ice bath. As it loses that heat energy, those molecules inside start to slow down. When those molecules slow down, they don't want as much space, so they contract. When that contraction happens, all of the liquid condenses and our thermometer begins to drop. This one here is starting to go up. And I'm gonna transfer this one to this bath to see what it does. Take this one out of its bath. Got to be really careful when you squeeze the bottle. When you apply pressure, it causes the liquid on the inside to jump a little bit. So while that's cooling, I'm thinking, you know, maybe next time I build this, I might get a, a bottle or a container that's not as um, flexible, that is more firm so that when I squeeze it, it's not impacting the liquid level inside of our thermometer. 
Yeah, how cool is this? You guys should build one of these too. This is awesome. A Galileo thermometer is a thermometer that uses the density of liquids to measure temperature and was invented in 1596. Galileo Galilei noticed that as temperatures change, the density of liquids change. He created a thermometer based on this observation. An ice cube melts because it gains heat energy from the surrounding area. We can take this, place it on a plate, and watch the ice cube eventually turn into a liquid as it gains heat energy. But this is gonna take a long time. We're gonna take two pieces of ice, put it on each one of the plates to see what happens. I want you to observe and pay close attention. Okay, these are about the same size. And the instant we put the ice onto the melting plates, the one starts to melt super ultra fast. And the question is, why? What could be different between those plates? They're both black. They both have these rubber gaskets on the outside. This ice cube's not melting. This ice cube is melting super incredibly fast. So we know this is gaining heat energy, but it's, it's coming from where? That's the question. Where is the heat energy coming from? Well, the pucks or the melting plates are made from different materials. This one here is made from a metal. It's a really good conductor of heat energy. That means it gives off heat energy easily and it absorbs heat energy easily. This here is an insulator. It's actually made of styrofoam. That means it's going to insulate and prevent the ice cube from gaining heat energy. That's why this one doesn't melt and that's why this one melted really fast. What's really interesting, if I lift this up, you can see with the thermal camera that the table is super blue. And that's because as the puck is losing heat energy to the ice cube, it's also absorbing heat energy from the table. So we have heat energy going from the, the puck to the ice cube, and then from the table to the puck, and it keeps transferring. And what's interesting, we can look this one up here, and we can look at the table and see that they are not the same. That the puck that was insulating definitely did not lose as much heat energy. During the winter, it's important to get bundled up. So cold. Your hands and head can lose a lot of heat energy when you're outside in the cold. Ah. Hats and gloves help prevent your body from losing heat energy, even when you're out in the coldest winter air. With awesome hats and gloves like these, ah. you can look great and know you're wearing good insulators. Gloves. Thermometers, conductors, insulators, heat energy, and thermal expansion. It's been a busy day keeping notes. Best of all, I know we've got a lot more cool things to cover. I've included some photos in our data section. These images from the thermal camera are really neat. I think Mr. C looks like Bigfoot in this one. Roar! <laughs> I also started a list of which things are good insulators and which are conductors. It seems that metals are often good conductors, while things like plastic and styrofoam appear to be good insulators. Pretty interesting. This container heats the water from the bottom through conduction or direct contact. But as the water gains heat energy, the water rises and begins interacting with the colder water. You can see the hot water go up and the cold water come down. This is called convection. We can see that as the hot water rises, the colder water falls down to gain heat energy from the metal plate. This is pretty cool. Air also expands and contracts when it's cooled or heated, but that's hard to see because air is transparent. Attach a partially inflated balloon on the top of an empty water bottle. Now place the bottle into a bowl with warm water. The air begins absorbing heat energy from the warm water. As the air gets warmer, the air molecules in the bottle expand and fill the balloon. Try putting your bottle in a bowl of ice water. The balloon contracts as the air gets colder. Check this out. I've got two cups of ice. Our thermometer shows that both have a temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit. What happens if salt is added to one of the cups? The temperature is dropping! 
I wonder why that's happening. Thanks, Alfred. We're actually going to use the rock salt with some ice to create a delicious science treat that you can make at home also. First thing, we're gonna take some ice and put it into a baggie. You're gonna cover the bottom of the bag almost all the way. This is a gallon um, baggie, so you're gonna need a gallon baggie for this. And then we're gonna use some of that rock salt because the rock salt lowers the freezing point of water, right? So we're gonna put that in here. And then we're just gonna let it sit there just for a second. Now, while that's starting to cool, in this container, we're gonna mix all of the goodness. So you're gonna need one cup, half and half. It's half and half creamer. And then you're gonna need a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract or flavoring. Oh, that smells so good. Mmm, I can't wait. And then we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. One, two. Now, you're gonna close this up really well. I'm gonna get as much of that air out as I can so that it doesn't pop open. Make sure that's sealed really good. We do not want this to come apart inside of our other bag. And now in order to make the ice cream, we're gonna put this on the ice. And what's gonna happen is the heat energy from this is going to get absorbed by the super, super ultra cold ice. And that is going to hopefully solidify our ice cream. Now, this is half the fun. Because now, oh, that is so cold already. And actually, because it's colder than ice, it's colder than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna put on some gloves so my, my fingies stay nice and warm. Make no bones about it, science is awesome. All right, here we go. We're gonna do this for five minutes. Five minutes later. But here's the thing, we're gonna take this out now. Oh my, look at that. All right, it's still pretty soft though, but I actually like my ice cream like this. So if you want it to be firmer, you would go longer so it would solidify a little bit more, but I just have to see what it tastes like. <gasps> All right. Woo! I just dropped my spoon. Oh my goodness. That is so good. Look at this. That's like perfect. That is so good. You have to make this. This is amazing. And yeah, I definitely like the texture and the thickness of it. And it's all about science. I literally made this in about six minutes. And you could do the same thing at home with your friends or your family. And tell your parents, it's all about science. This is really about science. Thermal energy, or the lack thereof, creates ice cream. Mm, my head, my head, oh my God. Slow down, Mr. C, because you might experience a brain, brain freeze. freeze. Oh, my brain. This sensation <laughs> happens when nerve endings in the roof of your mouth so send a message Seriously. to your brain that uh, they have lost too much heat energy. Eventually, head. things can go back brain to normal. Freeze, but I, I really want to eat more. <laughs> Check out this amazing demonstration from Mr. C's live science theater show. Boiling water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Liquid nitrogen, minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. Do the math, the difference, over 500 degrees. I need a countdown in three, two, one. That's some cool science. The liquid nitrogen 
gains lots of heat energy from the water and erupts upwards to create a humongous cloud as it cools. Today was definitely cloudy, with the chance of science. And what a tasty way to learn. I've added the ice cream recipe to our notes so we can make it again. Having the right measuring tools allows us to conduct experiments and make recipes that turn out to be delicious. Next time I wanna try making cotton candy ice cream. That's my favorite. What's your favorite kind of ice cream? Ice cream, you, you scream, scream, we, we all, all scream, scream for science. ice cream. I mean, science. Science is so much fun when we get to do cool things like thermometers and make ice cream. And Lila, what a great job getting everything into our notebook. <laughs> you know I'm gonna be using that recipe in the future to make more ice cream. And speaking of ice cream, it turns me into a heat monster. Roar! <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to put that back to the regular camera yet. Oh, my goodness. Isn't science fun? But that's what I love about what we did today. The infrared camera, all the different things, they allow us to see the world in a different way. That's what makes science so special. Keep learning, keep exploring, keep having fun, and remember, science is wherever you are. It's science. Oops, do I have a leak? It's so cold. It's so it's cold. Science time. Oh. It's science time. It's so cold. It's so much fun. Learning fun for Heat everyone. Transfer. Everyone. Woo. It's science time. Our bones are cold.